Hello, and welcome to the North Kinder Podcast, where we talk about business, parenting, family, and our NK Loves People initiative. My name is Sheena Steinbrenner, the owner and designer. This podcast, I'm excited to share that we have an amazing guest, none other than Katie Torwalt. She's a singer, songwriter, Grammy nominee, and most importantly, a mama. Here we go. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Let's talk about the first time that we met. Maybe you don't know the backstory a little bit. You and Brian actually came to our church so like six years ago, maybe five years wow. ago. Derek and I were so excited to see you play. We actually had booked like a family trip to go somewhere and I missed you. And I like, oh. we had like bought tickets like so far in advance. And then it just so happened that like the timing overlapped to wow. go on this family trip and we didn't want to miss it. And yeah, so I'm just giving you a little bit of our backstory. And we were so excited to hear you guys play and to sing. And actually my father in law he doesn't remember this but i'm gonna remind him he's like when royal's big enough i'm gonna send you guys to california to listen to brian and katie but now it's been like six years that's crazy (laughs) he's like because you missed it so and then fast forward however many years later and so excited again to meet you and to like actually give you something because i feel like you've given us so much and this is actually like coming Mm. from my heart i'm serious like with your music it is you know going through hard times or anything like worship music just touches our life and it's like everything to us. So I'm so happy that I'm able to give you like just a little bit of clothes for what. <laughs> that is so sweet. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. I had no idea all that backstory that we were there years before and at your church and everything. I did not realize that we've been to Canada quite a bit because Brian, you know, my husband's Canadian. So we go yeah. back at least, well, not this year, but normally, not 2020, but normally we go back like at least a couple times a year and visit. All his family still lives in Canada. That time specifically, if I remember right, it was a long story. We fly all the time, but flying with kids, you know, is so different. And I was a new mom. I think our little girl, Indigo, was like, I want to say nine, eight or nine months old. I had not left her yet. And we got to the airport and some crazy stuff happened, and I ended up having to leave her for the first time unexpectedly with my mom for that trip. Unexpectedly? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. I know. Oh. Isn't that crazy? So we could not, but we had to go because it was an event that we were, you know, we were committed to be there and everything. And we wanted to be there, but yeah. um, I, I couldn't bring her, and I did not expect it. And then I remember meeting you. I'm pretty sure this is the same trip, but I remember meeting you, and you had, like, this that like gift bag full of stuff for my little girl. And I was like really emotional about it. Just like, look at Jesus, like knowing that, you know, this wasn't the easiest trip for me, but, and you know, when you're a mom and you leave your little baby too, like even breastfeeding and everything. I mean, it was the first time, you know, you're crying, pouring the milk down the sink, just wasting all your, Oh my goodness. Just like, oh my gosh, I had to leave my baby. And so it was just kind of a sweet moment. Yeah. I think we took, yeah. yeah, like we took our kids everywhere. We're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're coming definitely, with. yeah, they're coming mm-hmm. with us. I think that was the first time we met and you were just so sweet and so generous. You guys were so generous. And then the most beautiful stuff that you handed me, like this gift full of stuff, so generous and beautiful. And you heard Jesus on that. And it was like a sweet moment for me too. So it was cool. And now, obviously I already was a big fan of your company and then became even more of a big fan after meeting you because I'm like, you've got these two kids running around. You're running the show. You're like, it seems like you have a great team and everything, but like you're, you're doing so much and just super inspiring as a mom, as a new mom, even at that time, trying to figure out like, what, what, what am I capable of with like a little child, as well as being like a working mom and everything. I thought it was really inspiring. So it was great Aww. to meet you in person. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. I guess speaking of being a working mom is you were going to bring Indigo with you when you're coming to Canada. So how does that work? Like, because I know you guys were on tour before that. And then uh-huh. I know all that kind of changed. So when you're on tour, like, how does that work being a mom yeah it's actually it's so different for everybody and thankfully I have I'm on like a text thread with a group of moms we call them like touring moms and a lot of them do a lot more than I do and have multiple children and stuff so I really realized like just like everything else in motherhood I feel like everybody it's different for everybody like what's good for you or what's good for your child Mm -hmm. is just really different and we can learn from each other and get advice and ideas and inspiration but really it's just like what 
you have grace for and what you're capable of in a certain season. It's just so different for everyone. So for me, like practically, I mean, we haven't done a tour this year because obviously 2020 <laughs> um, has just been wild, but we had two tours planned <laughs> and generally we go out on a tour bus. So you aren't flying to every single show or every single night, which is actually really helpful with mm -hmm. a child because I feel like you can have some kind of routine. It's not normal, I wouldn't say, but you can have some normalcy to it. The same like sleeping arrangement every night, your mm -hmm. stuff set out, you can kind of have your own little space or your child can have some kind of like little setup. And the last time, well, the first time we took Indigo on tour, she was four months and we were out for a month. Oh. And so four to five months and she did so well. I was so, I was, was of course super high, strong, anxious mom, just like taking her out for the first time. We had taken her on like little trips, but never for that long. And so even just packing alone, oh my goodness, for, for a month, for a four month old. And she was like a spitter, <laughs> like a spit up baby. So I mean, the <laughs> amount of muslin blankets that I brought with me on this tour, I, cause I was like, what am I, you know, we do do laundry on the road, but I'm like, when am I going to be able to do harder. laundry if I'm going yeah. through four of these a day, five of these blankets a day? <laughs> so, but it was fine. We worked it out. My mom, so as far as practically, my mom came with us and she would be with her every night when we would go on and actually started doing the bedtime routine with her because we would be on usually around her bedtime. You need the grandmas. Um, I could not do yeah. my life without the grandmas. Like that's just, so thankful. just literally. So I amazing. mean, so thankful. And I think of so many times, I have a lot of friends that don't have family close and I'm like, what can we do for you? Do you want to drop off your kids for a while and they can just play or, you know, that kind of stuff? Because yeah, family is just it plays a huge role in our life. So that is definitely one of the ways that we've been able to do what we do. And I think the, the minute I basically found out I was pregnant, she was the first, my mom was the first person I wanted to tell. And she was out of town for like a week and I was just dying. So when she got back, <laughs> I like showed up at her house like the second she got home. And I'm just like, do you want a job? Because I'm pregnant and I need you. <laughs> It is. And she it's was incredible. Job. I totally. know. I'm like, are you ready to be? She was already a grandma, but I'm like, you want to be like really involved. I mean, I wasn't even a super young mom or anything. I was already 30 when I had her, but um, I needed all the grandma help, all the advice I could get. So that's one of the ways that we're able to do what we do. And so many random things about touring motherhood um, mm -hmm. that are a little bit unique, but it's kind of just like regular motherhood in that you just adapt with different phases, like different seasons, different living arrangements, different schedules, and you try to be flexible. So. Well, I've seen Instagram pictures of you when like for a few years back. Yeah. Like wearing indigo, like during sound checks and like yeah. little headphones on. So I'm like, you, it's good to have like flexible team too, that you can do that yeah. stuff. Right. Like, and in our world, we were some of the last to have a baby. So everybody was so gracious as far as like, you know, I have a baby on a bus with like, thir like 12 people. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, she's going to cry. She's going to need some quiet sometimes. And everyone was like well seasoned in parenthood. We were like the newbies. So it was, it was amazing. And we have a lot of people around us that are pro parents, I would say. Thank you, Jesus. So being a working mom, I know everyone talks about balance. Like to me, it's almost mm -hmm. like balancing working and balancing children. It's impossible. And I feel like sometimes social media or whatever else can paint this mm -hmm. picture that there's this like super mom and she just does everything and everything's perfect all the time. And her kids are so well behaved and you could have mm -hmm. it all. I like, I who been is she? This before. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Like, who are you? Where are you? She's Wonder Woman. No, she's Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. That's who she is. <laughs> But I've been asked this question before and I'm just like, I don't have balance in my life. Like I feel like I have balance at times so I can mm -hmm. kind of like feel, okay, I got like today worked out, but I feel like it comes like day by day for me. Like it's like whatever takes priority in that moment. And sometimes it is work and it is the things that I have to do. And the kids just have to kind of, I work from home. And so the kids just kind mm -hmm. of have to entertain themselves and be a little more flexible. Yeah. I do emails or whatever else. And then other days it's like, we're hitting the zoo and then we're going for surgery fees and then we're like yeah. you know, doing all the kid things that kids want to do so I personally don't have balance in my life but I think I have moments mm -hmm. of balance like I don't know can you relate to that or absolutely yeah, yeah. I can totally relate to that I think <laughs> it is a constant struggle it's something that I'm learning and working on always is that mom guilt thing what is you know what is my calling what am I called to right now what am I called to today what is healthy for me and then what's the best for my child always that 
balance, I guess is the right word. But yeah, I think every day is different trying to be constantly in tune with what are the needs today. And then also realize that there's so much grace for us to make mistakes and then do better the next day or the next week because sometimes you're just pulled on in different ways and um, I think something I've already learned this year I probably I would say actually a gift that has come from this year so far has that I've realized some of my values that bring balance to my life that I will implement into the future when a lot of the stuff that was like unnecessary noise or or busyness kind of got like taken away, trying to intentionally replace it with only things that are fulfilling and valuable to me and bring peace and balance and joy to our lives. There's tons of stuff you have to do, whether it's motherhood or work, that is not your favorite and you just have to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not all the stuff that you're like, this is fulfilling. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. But for the most part, trying to implement certain things in my life, my values that bring me to a place of balance that make me a good mom and keep me in a place that I'm I'm fulfilled, I'm overflowing, that I can be the best mom I can be. But I totally get it because we just went to the beach last week um, for I my birthday. I saw that on Instagram. It was so great. That was amazing. It was so great. Yeah, we had <laughs> Happy an, uh, birthday. We, thank you. We had indigo. It was finally cold enough somewhere to put her in that little terry cloth purple two-piece thing from uh, <laughs> North Kinder. It is so cute. I'm like, please let it be cold enough for her to wear this before she grows out of it. We have a little niece though, and every time she grows out of something, I get to dress her up in it, and she's like a little chunk. So how it fits her little body compared to how it fits our little daughter is just the cutest thing. They, they're so different, but yeah, we went to the beach, and every day we got to just, we had no agenda. We planned to not really do any work or any emails. We we're only there for two days, but every day, Indigo was just so happy, and it was all about like, should we go get ice cream? Let's play in the sand. It was like the only intention of the time, and it was so great just getting that that undivided attention I guess with her and I felt so great like I'm I'm killing motherhood right now and then we go back home and of course that's not like our daily life Mm -hmm. but I think those little moments even bring a sort of balance I guess you know yeah it's just that every day is different and every season's different and I I think right now there's a pressure to at least I feel for myself and some of my friends Um, There's a pressure too with kids going back to school and doing distance learning and people that are working from home all of a sudden, like I have to do it all, be it all. Like it's up to me as as a parent. And I think that doesn't feel healthy. It's just so tough that that can only last for so long, but also realizing this is just a season um, that we're in right now. It's not always going to be like this and, and just doing the best that you can with what you have right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. taking the pressure off because this is not a normal time in life and so we're all just kind of doing the best we can with what we have and making the most of those little moments and those connections that we have with our kids so I don't know I'm two years into motherhood so I'm probably not the person to be (laughs) to be giving advice but no but this is your experience like this is what you feel and this is like how it's been for you and I think like those first years they're the toughest years like my kids are six and three they're sorry they're just like screaming through the window my husband's no, it's okay. I just heard I up. just heard my little girl be like mom, mom. <laughs> that's okay and I have a friend that just had a newborn baby and oh, yeah. yeah like I remember like that new baby like just the transition mm-hmm. that your body's going through and like the Ooh. sleep deprivation that is real and for some people like that can continue on for quite yeah. some time so yep. I think like yeah those younger years you do have a lot to say and especially yeah with working and everything Thing like that so mm-hmm. do you and Brian do you both work from home or like what like before COVID all this stuff happened like what mm-hmm. would your kind of daily routine look like and what that like was between something touring that... and songwriting and um, mm-hmm. do you play at church too all the time or like yeah we do what does that look like generally we do California we're still not really having church services yet so our services are pre-recorded in the week and we do some of those we'll lead worship for those and we're a big part of our church so we lead once or twice a month, usually in regular life. And then, yeah, so our day-to-day was already really unusual, I would say, because we could be on a tour or we could be home getting ready for a trip or we could be on a songwriting retreat or trip like that where we will just go to generally Nashville or LA or somewhere around there with a lot of songwriting and just do like 
just meeting up with other songwriters and taking like days of sessions. So that was already part of our regular schedule. Hi! <laughs> she has little sunglasses on, so cute. Oh yeah. Oh, you're so she, cool. Look at you. She loves her sunglasses and she already has her own little style. Oh. She only wear black all the time. Like it's black. Cool. I love black. Just, you know, she just has her own style and mm -hmm. she's usually wearing like a black baseball hat too. And <laughs> that's cool. It's like a cool girl. Okay. Look. Our little girl loves hats. Our little girl loves hats. Yeah. She's like, she will just, we'll be doing nothing. She'll wake up from a nap and she'll just grab a hat and put it on. She needs a hat on. So they have their thing. I actually That's really cool. love hats too. So I like kind of happy about it. But yeah, anyway, our schedule already was crazy. Like just so varied day to day. We could be home with like mm -hmm. before kids, pre-kids when we were home, a lot of the time we were off. So that's when we kind of caught up. That's when we would go hard on yeah. the road or on travel or, or writing or whatever it is. And then we would take a couple of days at home and we would just be like, let's watch a show. Let's clean our house. And there was no other agenda with children. That looks different. There are mm -hmm. no days really off. Like when everybody's talking about yeah. um, one of the first stay at home orders and everyone's like, let's binge Netflix shows. I'm like, this is a time in life where you really see a very big difference between between like parents that on the stay at home order <laughs> and single people or like young marrieds with no kids of like, yeah, I just watched through like all these shows and I'm like at the end of Netflix. I'm like, really? How is that? How does that feel? Or um, the people that are cleaning their pantries and their closets yeah. and uh -huh. like reorganize. I'm like, who are these people? I, know. I don't know any of these people. I know. Day to day just like varies every year, every season. It's really different. Mm -hmm. And that's actually not something that I ever necessarily wanted for myself. I like a little bit more routine, but that was one of the things that God really worked on me from like probably seven, eight years ago that I had to just like let go a little bit more of that, that control over that. Yeah. I totally feel you. I God like shaking up your routine because before I had kids, I was a high school teacher and everything is organized and color coded and like yeah. perfect all the time. And having a kid just like that'll break you from, <laughs> from that. And you just <laughs> gotta true. roll with it. Like it's you don't true. like your schedule is not gonna be your schedule. And I would say I wasn't a very flexible person. Like if I made a plan, like that's just what the plan is gonna be. But with kids, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> so it's good. I'm glad because I'm less rigid and I feel mm -hmm. that I do have more joy in my life too. Because if you're just kind of like open to what's going on, you're not going to, you're not like self disappointing in a way mm -hmm. too, right? Cause you like, you almost set yourself up for failure. If you're like, well, I'm going to do one, two, three, and four today, and it's going to go like this. And then if it doesn't happen that way, you're mm -hmm. like disappointed or you're unhappy. And so I feel like I had a lot of moments in my life, like, yeah, before kids where I would almost like set myself up mentally for failure because I was like, well, this is what my day should look like, or this is what my week should look like. And if it doesn't go that way, yeah. then you're, you're disappointed in what's happening. So I'm really glad that like kids in so many ways yeah. have brought a lot of joy to my life, but also to like get out of that and just be open to what God's doing. And I mean, I still don't have yeah. it sorted out, but I'm glad <laughs> that I'm more flexible. And I'm like, okay, well, what we're doing right now is good. And this is fun. And this is happy. And it doesn't have to go the way that I think it needs to go. Yes, so. that is so good. I think um, I'm still learning that. It makes oh, you like I, uh, grow as a person too, just in general. And then of course, as a parent, but it does. I'm like, I don't want to miss I don't want to be so focused and so so obsessed or so focused with a certain type of way, a certain type of routine that I miss like other gifts and other opportunities that I'm not you know, flexible enough or looking outside of my own little world to pick up on. So I think that's like such a beautiful lesson to learn. You're more advanced in that than me. I'm still learning, but. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> so what you said, you had to kind of like work on some things and you feel um, like God is kind of like adding things to your life that was kind of more important. What would be one of the things that you feel is kind of the most yeah. important that God has told you through this time and that you've kind of brought to the oh, forefront? Do you have one? You know, I've been probably since, I have not talked about this on any anything actually, since December of this last year, I totally think it was the Lord. I started going to see a counselor mm -hmm. and I just felt like motherhood, that transition, but even previous to that, I struggled a lot with, not a lot previously, more so after becoming a mom, but with anxiety, just walking through some different stuff that I had walked through, even through childhood and teenage years, walking out of fear and kind of getting to the bottom of that, digging a little deeper where that comes from. And I just kept feeling like God was putting that on my heart to just 
do a little bit of work in there. So I started seeing a counselor. She's helped me process so many of these different things, different lies that I've believed. And one of the things, probably one of the biggest things that I've learned this year that I've had to actually put into practice and makes me so thankful that I had already started this work previously to like March is just that I, without any kind of product, without any kind of anything to show necessarily, any, anything that I've created, I'm enough as I am. Mm -hmm. And that has been really huge. And it's been tested like over and over through different seasons of like identity stuff that I'm going to make me cry. (laughs) (laughs) No, but it's, I think, you know, there's like pressure applied to that area, especially when you become a Mm -hmm. mom, because it never feels like you're enough. (laughs) Like I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't do enough. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. And whether that's a working mom or just that your dream and your love is to stay at home with your baby, it's still, I feel like there's still, Um, it's tested in you just in your identity. Mm -hmm. And so that was something I got to start really like working on previous to a lot of the craziness that happened this year, but it's been like, Hey, (laughs) like put my money where my mouth is this year (laughs) in that area and letting the stuff that I produce and that I create not flow from that place of needing, needing to be validated or identity or, needing fulfillment in that area but that comes actually from God and that comes from how he created me that I'm just good enough as I am and so that's been you know that's something I would say I'm still working on that but I've definitely come a long way in that area and now I feel like when I do produce something that I'm really proud of and I mean creativity for me is such a love it's such a passion and that's something I'm finding out about myself too is that this isn't just work like making music or Mm -hmm. making my house cute or even like dressing fun. That's not truly, that is actually just something I think that God created me to do because it's the way that I express him, how much I love him and like just who I am, who I've been created to be. Um, It's not for anybody else, but when it flows from a place of, of knowing who I am and that I'm already enough, it's an overflow Mm -hmm. thing. It's not this like work thing. Um, and I've just found a new love for it. I would say a new passion for it. And everything that I've done is out of a place of passion and not out of obligation. And so I'm really excited about living my rest of my life like that. (laughs) It's freeing, you know, it's really freeing because there is this pressure, like you were even saying with social media nowadays or Mm -hmm. with whatever that it always could feel like you're falling behind, especially certain personality types, which I think I fall into that category of like, there's never enough. You can never do enough. You're always behind. There's always the next thing that you should have already been working on. <laughs> I know. And like you've I- already missed it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and even with, you know, honestly, with technology and everything, there's always some new thing that we, that we could learn or that we could be doing mm-hmm. or that we could have made and be ahead of that. And it always feels like you're falling back. And I've learned like, actually don't want to live my life like that. I want to be no. inspired by other people. Mm-hmm. I want to be always growing. And I really am passionate about always learning and being a student, um, Mm -hmm. being teachable, but I don't want to live under that constant pressure of like, I'm behind and I need to hustle to be, to catch up. So to be keeping up all the time. I know. Yeah. I'm going to practice that going forward in life even more than I already have. And, uh, I think this season has helped me really like clarify that a little bit. So clearly I'm still working some of that, some of that out. I love that Katie. No, I seriously love that. That's amazing. And thank you for sharing that. Like I feel so, I personally get bogged down and I know because I have a lot to organize and like we have even through COVID, like bless God, we have still been growing as a company. Like it's just like, it's totally God's favor. Not initially. There is a few, you know, there's a few weeks where like, okay, what's going to happen? (laughs) Yeah are we going to make this? I didn't freak out as much as I would have freaked out in the past, which is good. So that Mm -hmm. means I'm learning to be a little more flexible and I'm definitely, I'm learning to trust God a lot more. And even like when COVID happened, we had gone through stuff with building North Kinder. And like for me being wanting everything organized all the time, being a teacher and having a structured life and having a pension and like all these wonderful cushy things Mm -hmm. to totally throwing that out the door. Like I resigned, I signed retirement papers and everything. Like I quit put everything I had into North Kinder, gave up like a good paying job and just said, Hey, like, I just felt like I needed to do it. And then to Mm -hmm. grow that slowly and just all the risk that that took is very, is not my personality. And so that's how you know that it was God, like propelling that. And so when 
COVID kind of happened or when it kind of came to a front for us and everything kind of screeched to a halt. And we had these cool projects that we were working on and it was all like, no, nope, everything's done. I was like, yeah. you know what? I said to my husband, I'm like, we've actually been through worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we're going to be okay. So good. <laughs> we kind of like already, you know, walked through some really crazy stuff. And so this didn't even seem like, we're like, oh, okay, well, this is, it seems like it's not okay, but we we're able to have that trust and know that like God is going to work it out. And I don't want that to say, Hey, like, look at how wonderful I am and how far I've come. But it was because we had experienced like, and it's painful when God shows you Mm -hmm. stuff in your life because he loves you. And he says, you're my child and you need to work on this. It hurts. Like when you have to get rid of it, but I'm so thankful. thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful that like that process had happened because I feel free. And then God was able to bless us through COVID and our online business really went up and there's a lot of things that have happened and just, yeah, like reprioritizing, like you were saying, like, what is more important? Like, where can I redirect my time? And I think for Mm -hmm. me, for business, there was areas that I was spending a lot of time on that weren't actually doing anything for me or like weren't yeah. progressing in any way. And so I was able to kind of like evaluate, well, what's more important? Like, what are the things, this is in terms of work, not um, kids, but like, where can I redirect my focus to be smart with my time? Like now that totally. the kids are at home and everything like that. And so that has totally helped. And then I That's can so relate good. to being bogged down, like, cause with all like the pressure and the kids and the schedules and everything like that, I don't want to interact on social media or like, I wouldn't even want to do like a zoom chat with you because it would just feel like too much or like I couldn't be myself, right? I didn't, my personality wasn't there. And so it's important to me to just make sure like I'm cleaning those things up in my life and just like enjoying what's happening. Cause this is the best kind of stuff when you get to talk to other moms and you get to have it these is. connections and you get to like show people what you're doing on Insta stories and have it, have it be fun. And I think that it is good to have good role models too, as parents for people mm-hmm. to see like how we're loving on our kids and how we're raising them up. And I think that that is an important job as a Christian too, is to be that on social media. And so when you kind of get bogged down, that affects all that. <laughs> I, I so see that. I love, I love how even when this all first began, in in March when everybody had to kind of quiet themselves and go into their homes and everything I mean I think we saw some of the most beautiful ways that you can even use social media in those times of like Mm -hmm. there was truly connection and like camaraderie and support for people being like hey I'm in the exact same boat right now there was like a vulnerability where people were just like this is really hard or let's encourage each other I'm here to like just speak these things over you or whatever it was. And I don't want to lose that. I think that was really special. That was kind of what some of the most beautiful um, times that I've ever seen with all these platforms, whether it was like Instagram or Zoom, like we just connected because we were, we realized how valuable relationship and connection was during that time instantly. I mean, th- it was like a yeah. huge, a huge shift. I felt instantly of like, I remember counting down the days when I could just do like a zoom call with some of my friends. Cause we weren't seeing each other in person. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they play a huge role in my life, the, the relationships yeah. that I have. And I'm just never going to take that for granted again. And then the other thing that you said with regards to even business, like you were saying, it totally translates in, into business and our in our calling like what you were saying of I had let all these things in that were maybe good things everything didn't have the same amount of favor on it didn't have the same amount of fulfillment Mm -hmm. or favor or whatever that is and you're able to kind of identify some of those things even as a business person to say you know what maybe we don't need this as part of our business like let's be more focused on the area that we have a lot of success in and that we have a lot of favor in and be really intentional with that area for right now and I think that's been a gift out of this season too, which has been really cool for me. That's been one of the things has been songwriting. I've been like, oh, I love to write songs. And that's an area that we've had a lot of favor in. And so God wants to use that. I'm not going to get distracted and let that fall aside as just like one of many, many things. I'm going to have a lot of focus and intentionality with that area. And so that's something we've been trying to do too. But I love to hear it. I love North Kinder. Oh my gosh. I'm just so impressed. Stop. It's so beautiful. I love all your... Every single thing, any piece that we've ever worn or ever had from there is just the best quality. It's so beautifully made. 
I love you guys. You're I love so all your stuff. sweet. Well, it was, it, we started slow. Like it was me on a sewing machine with a little Etsy shop and I sold three items and I made all my own patterns and I was like, okay, let's just try this. And again, Derek is so good. Like I never would have done any of this stuff without my husband. Like I cannot say enough about this man. Like, honestly, he is so incredible. His heart is so good. And he's like, you can do it. Like, let's just buy a sewing machine. Like, let's just do it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and he helped me do everything. And I think it was like a very, very slow steps. And I, I think it had to be slow steps because mm -hmm. just the type of person that I am, I would never would have been able to like get to that spot. So, and I think like for you is songwriting, like, is that easy? Is it easier now? Like, what is that like for you? Cause like I design clothes or I look at this and it takes like a process for me. Cause I'm like, well, I want this type of fabric or I want this print. And then you try things, you come back and mm -hmm. it doesn't always like come back the way you had envisioned it and you got to work on it. So is that kind of similar yeah. to like songwriting yes. or is it a small idea or is it like sometimes you have like, Oh, this is the lyric or this is the melody or this is like, how does that mm -hmm. process work for you? And I think every single person is really different every songwriter and then also it comes differently like all the time I would say I think we both have me and Brian both have um, areas that come easier to us than the other in the beginning um, I would hear a lot of melodies that were just that was an easier thing for me and mm -hmm. he was quicker with lyrics and um, over the years we've tried to grow kind of in the areas that we're not as strong in and now it really looks different every time wow. I mean sometimes it'll come with a little idea we'll have a, just a piece of scripture or something that will stick out and we'll write it in our notes or we'll have a little voice memo on our iPhone in the car and it really takes I think one thing that I've learned generally it takes longer than you think and it mm -hmm. takes more work than you think it's going to take it's stewarding, you know, because there's a lot of little lines, like I'll be listening to a sermon and I'll have a little line that will stick out. And it's like just God highlighting something, an idea or a thought or a title of a song. And it, sometimes it can just sit in my iPhone for like two years. <laughs> and I'll never like, yeah, and I'll go back or, you know, but hopefully we go back and we try to steward those things and we'll get a lot of pieces of songs that we have to go back to and try to work on and work through. And um, I can tend to be like a perfectionist, but I've realized actually something I've realized recently, which I'm not super into the Enneagram, but I've recently, like I have a couple friends that are very, very into it. I know it's like a hot topic right now and everything is very cool. I have loved it for like trying to understand people that are different than me, different personality types or, yeah, I've, I've liked it for that. And one thing that it has helped me with that I realized that I'm actually not really looking for perfection. I'm just looking for authenticity. And so when I go okay. back and go back through a lyric and I'm like, it's not good enough. It's not that there's a perfect lyric. It's just that there's a more authentic to me lyric that would just mm -hmm. feel more real to me when I sang it or when I, or when somebody else sang it, that it just feels like a little bit more, yeah, authentic is the right word. So, um, so sometimes it'll take me a long time to get there. Uh, I don't yeah. always have an easy time with words, ironically. <laughs> it's kind of ironic because I, we write words for a living, but well, like, sometimes I don't have an easy time. that way at all. It seems, oh. I know, when you hear the finished product, you're like, oh, it's like, it seems so effortless, right? That's how, but, it always, that's how it's supposed yeah. to be. <laughs> but it's not well, it effortless. <laughs> it's not effortless. So there will be songs that will come out a lot easier than others. Sometimes God just breathes something mm -hmm. and you get like the full picture and it comes out in an hour or two hours, but that's very rare for us I think for some other people maybe that happens more frequently <laughs> but it's just really varies like there's not a lot of consistency other than we try to be disciplined with the practice of songwriting and, yeah. and quiet ourselves and try to listen but how the song comes out changes like all the time do you ever feel like that there's a finish because I know with creatives it can be mm -hmm. like you always want to work on the song and work on the song or do you ever yeah. just feel like there is like hey this is good or like it's finished or is it never finished I know sorry that's a yeah. tough question no too. it is tough um actually Brian is this is where my husband Brian comes in really he's amazing at this he he usually can help me be like okay it's done leave it. Like we got to okay. leave it. Um, because yeah, I tend to be like, Oh, there's just a little something better we can do to this. But in our producers that we worked with actually in the record making process, like past the songwriting, cause we'll be rewriting the song mm -hmm. in the studio as we're recording it. Like, I'll be like, there's one oh, lyric yeah. that we just, <laughs> and we've had some great producers that are like, that just bring a lot of confidence and a lot of stability to the, to those moments of being like, this is 
beautiful. Like you need to just leave it. There is nothing better. And just kind of remind us that. And then Brian, like I said, Brian is just really good at that of like, no, this is done. This is really good. But yeah, if it were up to me, I probably would have never released like one song in my life. <laughs> nothing would have ever been done. Nothing would have ever been finished or good enough to like put out into the world. So it's something that I would like to say I would have done, but I don't know for sure if I didn't have like the people around mm -hmm. me that have been around me, if, if I ever would have been finished with anything. I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> That's good. That's why you need those people. I know. Cause I feel like with, yeah, with my husband too, like he always just mm -hmm. like wants to work on it, wants to work on it. And I'm like, just yeah. release it or just put it out. Like mm -hmm. you got to have it out there. So that's a good it's question. True. So your song gold is unreal. Yeah. I love oh, it. Thank it's so you. good. And yeah. And then you have the video and stuff too. So how did that like play out with COVID? Like how did you record yeah. that stuff? Like how did that? Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. And your so beautiful top that you're wearing. We got to oh. talk about style too. Your beautiful clothes. Oh, okay. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I've always loved clothes. And it's, I think it's kind of, it's an interesting thing as like a worship leader, because I'm obviously not there to show my clothes, but it's just something that I've realized. And like I was saying, no, Even during but the season it, where no one is ever going to see anything you're wearing, basically, because you're basically still at home most of the time. I still love clothes. I still mm -hmm. love fashion. It's just kind of a way that I express myself. And when I write music, mm -hmm. a lot of the time we'll see like a kind of a color or uh, have a picture of like what that sound would look like. And so it translates sometimes visually into the artwork or into any any of the videos we do or the social stuff or my clothes like it all kind of it all kind of is the way that I see mm -hmm. the full picture with the music so so is that like you that comes up with that because like the yellow and like the cloud and like you're on the cliff and you're I don't know is that like a blanket yeah. or what were you kind of like floating in the air is that you that kind of sees that it is me who, yeah like, yeah it's okay, me that's yeah cool. <laughs> I bought that piece of fabric from Amazon it is just a yellow like <laughs> piece of fabric and I actually dyed a couple other pieces because I couldn't find the right yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so mm -hmm. random but it's just part of the process for me you need the creative. right yellow you, yeah you know more than anything you need the right fabric you need the right shade <laughs> if you have something in mind and it comes out like a totally different shade you're like this just is not this is not it so yeah it's me I I just get this whole picture generally and even in the last couple of years I think I've been more confident with expressing those things from the production to the artwork to mm -hmm every picture and the editing to all that it just like I feel like it tells the story and it just part of me expressing the whole story and telling that story so I love being involved with that and getting to be a big part of that um and yeah so with gold we wrote that song last fall we wrote it with Rita Springer which I'm sure you've probably heard of she's amazing she's like legendary songwriter worship leader has written some of my favorite worship songs and has been around for a long time and she's just better than ever. So she actually has new music out and I highly recommend, but um, her and then our friend right. Hank Bentley, mm -hmm. he is another incredible songwriter and has had his hand on like a lot of songs that we listen to and that we've, that we've written. Um, we yeah. wrote it with them and we had no idea. We had no idea this year. We hadn't even yeah. foreseen really any of this, but we were talking a lot about like refining and what does that look like? And to be refined. And if we really want that, it's kind of a scary prayer to pray. But at the same time, like the beauty that comes out of that painful as it is, like being yeah. refined and being purified is something that we want to be Christ-like and to be carriers of, of his glory and his presence. And so it's something that we, we started to write and we finished I think around December and that video was taken with me leading at church that song in December oh, wow. right before Christmas and so it's a long process actually I think I think probably most mm. people know that but it's actually quite a long process from when a song's written and recorded to when it's released so this was actually shorter than normal um, okay. normally can be like a year and so this was shorter than normal, but there's a line in that song that, well, pretty much the whole song is just talking about refining and fire. And um, so when 2020 happens and we're being refined in this very painful way yeah. in so many areas of our life yeah. at the same time, it has just like, it's even meant that much more to sing that song. And now we've got to lead it live a little bit. And it's like, it is a prayer that we want to pray 
in, in the bridge, it's like talking about what will happen as we're, after we're purified. Like there's new wine, there's new power, there's new, like we're going to experience God in a more powerful, real way. There's going to be an outpouring of his presence. And um, we're going to be able to be carriers of that after being refined. So it's kind of like, I feel like it's a prayer that I'm still praying this year. <laughs> it's still very fresh for me. And that's, I feel like that happens sometimes with songwriting, that it's a prayer that God is kind of like prophetically giving us for the next season that we don't, that we don't know that we'll even need yet. Um, and yeah. then when that next season comes, it's kind of like a gift back to, it sounds, that sounds really kind of weird, but almost like a gift back <laughs> to herself of like, Oh, this was from God for like this next season for us. Mm-hmm. And so that, that song has been sort of like that for us. It's yeah. beautiful. And like you talk about, I just want to say like, you can tell that it does come from your heart, like what you sing and what you and Brian do, like it's genuine and it translates. And so it's really touching when you are putting yourself out there. It can be very scary and vulnerable, but like, I know I feel it. And I know everyone that knows you and knows Brian and it does. It, it comes out. You can tell that it's actually genuine and it's from your heart. So like, just, thank, yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> that means a ton to us. So, it oh, really it does. Does. but honestly it does like it's genuine and you can tell any, like any worship leader or that is out there. Like you can see that, that they do have that connection with God or that they do like you, it's expressed like in their worship and when it comes out. So it's like, we're so thankful for that. I do have to ask you, yeah, because you're wearing your beautiful yeah. shirt. I do yeah. have to ask you about the Grammys. Like, yeah, and like your beautiful outfit you were wearing there and just like, oh man, can you talk about that? Because I want to, I personally want to know about the style process and all that. Yeah, it's, that's so fun. Like all that girly (laughs) stuff. I've always loved that. My mom jokes, like when I was around two, I just started being really insistent upon like what I wanted to wear and doing my hair very experimental I would say very experimental to this day with like I'm up for trying different hair colors and just different crazy trends and stuff I just love I love that aspect of creativity and so but the Grammys was so cool and there's a whole backstory to like what a special sweet kind of kiss from God that was to be able to all go and Jesus Culture's album got nominated for um, I think it was Christian album of the year and so we didn't win but honestly I didn't think for a second we we're gonna win we were in the same category as Lauren and she is incredible <laughs> also it was just the impact that her album had that year was I mean for Christian music it really took it to another level she was one of the first Christian artists in like I don't know how many years that female Christian artists specifically too, that was being played all over mainstream radio. I mean, I think we heard her song in the Uber to the Grammys, like on the mainstream radio. So it was just beautiful. But uh, for the style process, it was actually so cool. So I, over the years, I, (laughs) it's kind of, I don't know if it's like something I'm super proud of, but I had a style account on Instagram for a long time. Yeah, I I opened. Yeah. Yeah. I opened a little shop for like, I want to say two months before I got pregnant and terribly ill, uh, a little Instagram um, clothing shop. And it actually was really fun and went really well. And then it was just kind of one of those things that I'm so glad I tried it, but it just didn't really fit the season of life for me right now. But um, through that process and that style account, I actually met a designer that Amanda James, her name's Amanda James Design. Mm-hmm. Let me look up her thing so I get all her info right. But <laughs> she is incredible and she actually is like does uh bridal gowns i didn't really just want to go to like nordstrom or something and just pick up something i what i was this like is this is a grammy this is a big i know deal. i was like this could <laughs> right? be really special to have something like designed for me or a design that's just like mm-hmm. unique for this event yeah her name's amanda james design and she does bridal but she has started to do a lot of other stuff but it's like handcrafted like i mean she i think she worked for a couple different like really big name Um, designers that we would all know the names of uh, for a long time doing textile work. So she actually would do all kinds of textile work, a lot of very detailed, beautiful pieces Mm -hmm. and beadwork and all this stuff. And so I came across her thing somehow and um, somebody tagged me, I think, in one of her designs. And I was like, this is stunning. And so we connected over Instagram and she offered to kind of custom make me one of her gowns and like fit it to me and everything for the Grammys to be worn for the Grammys. And it was a dream come true. I mean, truly I, on my wedding day, I didn't even have a dress that nearly was this dress. It was just, I felt so beautiful. 
And it was just the best because she was so generous and so gracious with like taking so much time to do fittings. I flew in like the day before the Grammys and she fitted it on me that day and did all the work and then dropped oh, wow. off at my hotel for me to wear it the next day. And I just felt like truly like a queen. It was just phenomenal. My dress, my wedding dress costs like, I mean, two, $200, I think, you know, so this dress, <laughs> I just felt like hey, that could be a million too. bucks. <laughs> I was like, I mean, yeah. it was, it was great. Like it was beautiful, but it was mm -hmm. just, it was one of those things that this was kind of like a fun little redo. <laughs> and so one of our friends even like took pictures of me and Ryan before the Grammys. Um, and it was just really fun and really special. And yeah, I loved it. It had a beautiful long train and all this gorgeous lace on it. It was gold. Ironically, apparently I love gold. I really do love gold. Okay. But it was just a phenomenal day. And Brian, of course, looked amazing. He had like a tux on and everything, the full deal. And the Grammys were just so fun and inspiring because it actually sounded incredible. I don't know if I didn't even know uh, how great people sounded live hearing all those different mm -hmm. artists that performed that night. So this wasn't this year's Grammys. This was the year before. Alicia Keys hosted. She's incredible. I mean, truly oh gifted person and just charismatic <laughs> and sang throughout the whole night flawlessly. It was incredible. So it was the best night ever. And I was also still breastfeeding though. This is maybe TMI. I'm not sure. So I'm wearing this beautiful gown and I'm like, what kind of bra do I wear with this? <laughs> I don't even understand what to do. I'm like a new mom. I'm like, am I going to have to go pump like halfway through the Grammys? Like what's the plan? Cause I, I didn't bring our little girl. The Grammys actually take like all day too. It's like, yeah, I, I heard that. So, right. Cause you're just seeing like yeah. snippets and that's why there's like seat fillers. Right. And stuff like that. Yes, there's, seat fillers. That. Yeah. there's a lot of the Grammys that aren't televised, but a lot of all the Christian categories and a lot of the other yeah. music that's not like the top 40 music is mm -hmm. throughout the whole day. So we were there for hours and hours and hours, but it was well worth it. But yeah, that was like the funny fact behind the scenes of, of me being like what's my plan with this everything worked out i was completely fine a new mom just like being like i don't know like <laughs> i don't know what to do you about do this what you gotta do but, um, you got that yes, seat filler over there and you yeah <laughs> and you go and i think i missed a performance or two but it's fine and it was just a great experience it was like a really fun thing i hope hopefully we can go back someday i don't know what for but if god wants to bring us back. I'm not going to say I don't want to go again. I would love to wear <laughs> another fun dress and of go course. hear beautiful music. So, but yeah, well, the world time. needs you. The world needs, needs Jesus culture. It <laughs> needs you and Brian. You got to keep singing. And I think that's the thing too, is we have to give what we have. And I yeah. don't want this again to come across as like, Oh, but it's true. Like sometimes it feels like what we're doing is so small. And I mm -hmm. think about, yeah, when I first started North Kinder and I still like, I have big dreams for what I want to do mm -hmm. with North Kinder and like, just like the social aspect that we have been doing out of it as well. And we want to grow that and yeah. like community and giving back. And so like, I feel like I'm maybe 50% there, maybe 30%. I don't know. Yeah. It's like a hundred, but it is like, you have to just give what you have. And so even yeah. going back to like, making that first little pair of pants that I made. Like it seemed so small and insignificant. And I do all these little like markets in my city and it's like, well, you just have to give what you have. Yeah. And now look at you guys too, right? Like giving what you have. And especially now with our global situation, like mm -hmm. music and church online, like it's been able to have such a greater reach than it's ever had before. And I find even like for me and like my friends that don't, really know Jesus like it's so much easier for me to say hey like here's a link to like this song or a church or whatever mm -hmm. and it's much easier for someone to kind of see that or listen to that than opposed to like going into a physical building because that can be intimidating so it's true it's awesome or even the spin studio that I would go to in my neighborhood I heard like a Christian song one of them like put like a Hillsong song on wow. there and I like, to the spin instructor after and I was like oh like are you a Christian she's like no but I just really like this music and so I was able to like send them wow. like other songs like from other Christian artists I'm like well here like here's You're gonna all love this these other then. stuff I know yeah. <laughs> this, this is That's amazing great. and so so they've been like listening to music like on the side just because they're like it obviously speaks to them right yeah and so that's been like a good opportunity so I'm so glad that you guys pour out and you give what you have and it's just an amazing thing. So I have a few rapid fire questions for you because I know Ooh, you've been okay. on here for a long time. So just quick, what's your favorite snack? <laughs> Ooh, favorite snack. I love sour candy. It's a weakness. Okay. It's 
it's definitely a weakness. I try to like pace myself. Yeah. Uh, you and Brian, you go for Slurpees on your anniversary. What's your favorite yes. Slurpee flavor? Truth be told, I don't love a Slurpee as much as I love like shaved ice or something. You know, Slurpees, they're very sweet. But mm-hmm. if I have to get, like we get one every year because our, yeah, our anniversary is on that day and it's part of our little tradition. And my favorite that is probably the most tolerable for a whole drink would be something tart, like a lemonade kind of a thing. Okay. Um, lemonade, maybe some mixture, you know, you're going to mix them, some classic cherry, some lemonade. Brian likes Coke, which I think is pretty gross because it has no carbonation flavor in it. <laughs> um, but you know, to each his own. Uh, what do you eat for breakfast? I don't eat breakfast enough, honestly. Coffee, it's not great. And then I'm starving by time lunch, but I've been trying to eat a little more protein since the quarantine. I've been trying to be more consistently like working out. And so I'm trying to eat more like eggs and protein and, um, just fruit and sm- green smoothies and stuff in the morning. Yeah. If you got any ideas, send them over to me. Nice. It seems like you guys eat really well. So I'm going to get inspired. Oh, it's because again, I married a creative. So he likes to cook and do all that kind of stuff. But me, I'm basic. I could eat the same thing. <laughs> Breakfast, really? lunch, and dinner. Like I'm just. Oh, see, I can't eat yeah, the same like, thing. I don't know. No, I actually <laughs> cook dinner every night for my whole family, which is really fun. It's totally a creative thing for me. But for breakfast, just for myself, I'm like, I don't know. I'll take a lot. Oh, take. smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> Smoothie. Yeah. yeah. What, what hand do you hold your toothbrush in? I'm right-handed, yeah. but I have a lot of, almost all my family is left-handed. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, I'm right-handed. What is your pump up song? Like if you, you know, you got to get Ooh. ready, you have something like, do you listen to a song to like pump you up? You know, I listen to a lot of Beyonce when I want to get pumped up. <laughs> I totally do. Everyone's not going to love that. (laughs) Yep. I'm on the treadmill. Like I'm just starting and there's probably a Beyonce album starting. It usually gets me pretty hyped. I'm like, (laughs) girls run the world girls. You know, I'm just like, (laughs) yes, let's do this. I can't help it. Hey, I get it. I go to spin. They have all the songs, you know, it's good. It gets you going. You got to get pumped up. Music is so powerful. You're like, you know, the songs that they play at the beginning of a basketball game, that's for a reason because you're getting like super amped while you listen to it. (laughs) Last question. What is your your go-to outfit go-to outfit well is that in 2020 or just in regular life uh, you I'm can like, do both you can do regular life and 2020 okay i would say regular life so boring but a really great fitting pair of jeans but i really like like i'm very into like off-white ivory kind of color jeans mm-hmm. high-waisted and i love a straight leg mm-hmm. i don't prefer a skinny pants but i like that and then a great top like either a great t-shirt, like band tee or something like that. Any kind of fun like top that is, depends on how I feel. In 2020, probably some shorts, like some sweat shorts. Some sweat <laughs> shorts and a flannel and like mm-hmm. anything from Target because nothing ah. was open for like six months besides Target. <laughs> You guys don't have Target. They they came to Target in Canada, but they didn't actually roll out what Target had in the States. So they did like a modified Canadian version. And so then of course it didn't work because people are like, well, where's my Magnolia Joanna Gaines stuff? Right. Where's all that stuff, right? It's like, that's what the people want. Sorry. I'm just random off brand. It was a downgraded for Canada so it was oh just, I, I know I was there work. yeah I was there because Brian's whole family was excited you know we love Target here and mm-hmm. when they got one in his town I went and I was just like what is all, none of this we don't even have any of this in our store and it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't good and yeah. then it went out of business so hopefully Target tries again Target needs to go to Canada well we can sign a petition sign a petition right here below this podcast and I'm joking <laughs> well th- Thank you, Katie, so much for joining me on this podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And this was a lot of fun. Now I need to go to bed. (laughs) Oh, for sure. Come back. Yeah. Next. Next time.